In the days since the crash of Air India Flight 171, sufficient data has emerged to challenge much of the online speculation, particularly claims made by self-proclaimed experts blaming the pilots for not retracting the landing gear or for taking off without deploying flaps. Let's start by examining the landing gear scenario. Available footage, though grainy, confirms that the aircraft's gear remained extended during the crash. Some argue this suggests pilot error. However, even if the gear had been left down by mistake, which is unlikely, the 787 is designed to fly just fine in that configuration. It would consume more fuel and be speed limited, but it wouldn't crash purely because the gear was down. What's more plausible is a malfunction in the landing gear system. One video, though low quality, shows the takeoff run. The plane becomes obscured as it rotates, making it difficult to see the immediate gear behavior. However, understanding how the 787's landing gear trucks operate gives us clues. The trucks, which house the wheels and brakes, tilt during takeoff and landing. On takeoff, after the nose lifts, the gear tilts so that the rear wheels are down. If the truck never reaches this rear down position, a sensor may not recognize that the aircraft is airborne, potentially preventing gear retraction. Another possibility is that the pilots did select gear up and the system initiated retraction, which includes a tilt to the forward wheels down position, but then failed mid-cycle due to a mechanical or systems failure. Blurry footage of the aircraft moments before impact shows the landing gear tilted forward, consistent with the initial retraction phase. This supports the idea of a failed retraction process, not pilot oversight. There are built-in safeguards in aircraft like the 757 and 767 to prevent premature retraction when the system doesn't sense takeoff. These safeguards are typically overridden only after performing a checklist. The 787, although more advanced, likely follows a similar logic. Therefore, the evidence suggests a gear system fault, not a crew error. Next, let's address the flap configuration. Early theories propose that the pilots either failed to deploy flaps or retracted them too early. These claims are debunked by wreckage analysis and clearer video footage both of which confirm that the flaps were extended during takeoff. Even logically, this theory doesn't hold. A takeoff with flaps up would result in a much longer takeoff roll, potentially preventing liftoff. However, this aircraft did become airborne and climbed to around 600 feet, well beyond ground effect before losing altitude, which indicates that it had adequate lift and thrust at the time. Let's clear out the obviously wrong stories circulating first. Fuel contamination or misfueling is one of the theories being circulated, but based on everything we know, it's extremely unlikely in this case. Commercial airliners like the Boeing 787 are fueled using standardized Jet A or Jet A1 fuel, sourced from certified aviation suppliers at international airports. These suppliers operate under strict protocols and quality control checks, any contamination in the supply chain would likely affect multiple aircraft, not just one. Moreover, airliners receive fuel from the same ground handling partners at major hubs, often the same ones they've used for years. The idea that a wide body like the 787 could have been randomly loaded with a completely wrong type of fuel, such as AV gas used in piston aircraft, or exotic blends like JP-8 or JP-5, which are used primarily in military operations, is highly implausible. These alternative fuels aren't even available in commercial airport fueling infrastructure. And even if, hypothetically, the wrong type was introduced, most turbine engines would still operate for some time, though not efficiently, rather than fail instantly. In the crash video, we don't see any of the telltale signs of fuel-related flameouts. No visible backfires, no puffs of smoke, no sputtering, and no gradual shutdown. The engines appear to lose thrust rapidly and almost simultaneously, which does not match the typical profile of a fuel contamination incident. So while it cannot be ruled out with absolute certainty yet, 
Based on current evidence and airline procedures, fuel contamination ranks as one of the least likely causes. Another popular speculation is bird strike, which is common during takeoff and especially plausible at airports like Ahmedabad, where bird activity has been a known issue. But in this case, the video evidence doesn't support that theory. In one of the clearest videos available, no birds can be seen near the aircraft, neither on the runway nor in the air. If both engines had ingested birds, there would likely be some visible or audible indication, smoke, engine surging, or visible flocks, but none of that is present. So while bird strike is a known risk and the airport does have a bird problem, this particular video doesn't show anything to support that as the cause. Like the flap and gear theory, it remains speculative at best. The true cause appears to be a dramatic loss of engine thrust. ADSB data shows an unusually low rate of climb, about half of what it should be, a pattern consistent with inadequate power. Further supporting this is the likely deployment of the Ram Air Turbine, RAT, which only activates during extreme power loss scenarios, such as a dual engine failure. Though there are other triggers for RAT deployment, the loss of thrust aligns most closely with a dual engine rollback or shutdown. In the blurry video, there appears to be a small rotating object that might be the ram air turbine, and a faint mechanical whirring sound can also be heard, possibly consistent with rat deployment. However, given the video quality and lack of confirmation, this remains purely speculative. Now, let's explore a critical vulnerability specific to the Boeing 787 that could explain such a loss. It's highly integrated electrical architecture. Unlike older jets that use pneumatic and hydraulic systems for core functions, the 787 relies heavily on electricity to operate flight controls, FADEC, engine control units, throttle input, anti-ice, fuel valves, avionics, and more. If the aircraft suffers a complete electrical failure, even temporarily, this can disable all these systems simultaneously. The Dreamliner is equipped with six power sources, two integrated drive generators, IDGs, and two permanent magnet generators on the engines, plus two more from the APU. These are managed by software-driven power distribution units. However, you don't need all six to fail to cause a disaster. A single point of failure in the electrical distribution network, whether from a software bug, a short circuit, or a faulty sensor, can isolate essential systems from usable power. Even though FADEC systems have independent power from engine-mounted PMAs, a disruption in electrical routing can prevent that power from reaching its destination. Cooling fans, inverters, or relays in the integrated modular avionics IMA racks can fail, leading to system overheating or shutdown. Over-reliance on software to manage critical power paths means a single corrupted data input could falsely trip an overload or disable entire buses. The battery on board isn't designed to sustain full operations. It's only intended to support essential systems for a short time, minutes, not hours. It can provide emergency power for FADEC, allow RAT deployment, and sustain basic instruments. But if the electrical failure affects distribution control or software logic, even battery-supported systems might go offline. This sets the 787 apart. In a conventional dual-engine failure, the APU can auto-start and restore electrical power while batteries support FADEC restart. RATs can assist hydraulically, but in a complete electrical collapse, even with engines technically running, throttle control may be lost, FADEC could shut down, and flight surfaces might become unresponsive. The aircraft becomes uncontrollable despite still having engine thrust. While extremely rare, these events aren't unheard of in the 787's history. The problem isn't just redundancy in generation, but access to the generated power. If logic pathways are corrupted or electrical routes severed, the system may still technically generate power, but the aircraft can't use it. The situation we may be looking at in the AI-171 crash is not a conventional dual-engine flameout but rather a cascading electrical systems failure that affected thrust and control simultaneously. 
It's the darker side of the 787's innovative design. Immense capability, but also immense dependency on its electrical heart. Until cockpit voice and flight data recorders are released, the exact cause remains speculative. But what's increasingly clear is that blaming the pilots for gear or flap mismanagement is both unfair and unsupported. The issue likely lies deeper in the aircraft's systems. Aeroslice will continue monitoring this tragedy and sharing technical breakdowns as more data becomes available. Our thoughts remain with the families and those impacted by this heartbreaking event.